Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Maverick here with another episode of No Guns Life. In fact, the pen ultimate episode because this series only has 12 episodes. Uh, so as we near the end here, we do learn more and more about Juzo's past. In fact, at the very end of the last episode, we see Pepper and um, Seven actually make their way into Juzo's uh, office, right? So... You know, one of them is a gun is also one of it, you know, a gunhead, right? So probably part of the gunslave unit as well. Maybe an old acquaintance of Juzo, maybe not. Maybe they have like different iterations, different generations as well. But we shall see, right? Definitely, it probably well, it's definitely going to give us a little bit more insight into Juzo's past, etc., etc. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. All right, let's begin in three, two. One play. Hmm. How exact? I mean, it would be great to end this on a note where it leaves people wanting for more, right? So maybe some big revelation in regards to Jesus' past, and so that's going to make us want to continue to see what's going to happen. So, ready to fight? Probably not. So seven here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you're certainly a smug one, aren't you? Even more so than your sister. Ah, uh, let me skip this real quick. See you guys in a second. Back. Owner. Oh yeah, and also there's the the entire uh you know the entire thing with Victor, right? Mary's brother and potentially an old acquaintance of Juzo, or potentially even his former. His former uh, user, whatever it's called, handler or whatever. Hmm. They're not exactly the same sort. Nice emphasis there. Yeah, they're called hands. Because with that, they can, their full potential can be unlocked. So last time, when, <coughs> when Tetsuro actually pulled his trigger, I'm assuming that that doesn't completely... That's not his complete power either. Hmm. 
Like you? Okay. But they still operate in a similar manner, so... Ooh. Yeah, Juzo's in big trouble now. I feel like right now their power level is probably on different levels right now. Ooh, really? Really? Even with combat mode activated, Juzo can still take care of it? That's surprising. She's just gonna, just gonna lie there and take it. <laughs> you can react a little bit, Juzo. Holy shit, half his shoulder is gone. Yeah, she's definitely even worse than her sister. Harmony? Yep. Ooh, it's suffering. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that there. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> this is way too funny. <laughs> oh. Pepper, you're a funny girl. Well, Mary's got her hands full today. <laughs> His left arm was amputated? Well, I mean... Can probably get another one. Yes, an overextended after all. <laughs> Hi, Colonel Nan. And good morning to you. ちょっと <laughs> So I guess in the end, um, Seven doesn't really have anything to do with Juzo's past. Yeah, they can't go against their big boss, right? Yeah, and Cronin's gonna go rogue again. So, what can they do? What can they do? <laughs> He's gonna make Etsuro his hands. I 
Ah, flashback. There we go. So, is his former hands actually Victor? The brother of Victor? Or no? Come on, don't just tease us like that. Harmony. That's not good. So, so it's sort of like a feedback. You feel. That makes its usability a lot less. Oh yeah, it's hard for him to actually light his match right now with only one hand. Yeah, he chose this job. Yeah, Jesus was probably going to make Tetsuro his hands. <laughs> right now? Of all times? What? <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Ghost of an extended? I mean, this this sort of detour has to have some kind of meaning, right? It definitely is going to be related with the main plot in some sort of way. We're literally one episode till the end now. There's no, like, this has to have a big reason. What is going to happen? Well, that wasn't creepy at all. I, I really don't get it. We literally have one episode left and... What? How, how are they going to end this? Alright, see you guys after the end. Alrighty, so I thought this was a little bit weird that they were actually taking this sort of detour right now to essentially go through another kind of event or another sort of storyline, right? So I went back and checked a little bit and apparently No Gun's Life is going to have a second season as well. Um, although I think it's actually going to be a second core, right? So this is effectively a two core anime. So. But, um, you know, it's with the kind of annoying trend that happens nowadays where the second core actually happens with a season in between. Uh, similar to, for instance, Fairy Gone, which I'm watching this season as well. So, I guess they have a little bit more production time uh, in between the cores so that they can maybe prepare a little bit better or perhaps it's just some scheduling issues, right? Um, I mean, it's not entirely confirmed, but as far as I know, that seems to be the case here. And that would make an awful lot of sense, right? Because we are nowhere near a good stopping point for the story so far. Like, if this series ended literally in the next episode, I really don't know how they could end it in 20, min 20 or so minutes and actually still have a a not even satisfying conclusion but a logical or reasonable conclusion right so i guess we got that to look forward to now as for the actual episode itself um you know uh, apparently seven was not actually an old acquaintance of juzo so uh not really that much there to talk about there juzo did end up talking a little bit about guns gunslave units you know especially the hands and whatnot but that wasn't really all that much as well um the the actual backstory that we got was his flashback later on uh that involved his partner right which i still don't quite know if it's victor or not um now one thing that did surprise me during the scene where seven and juzo were fighting right i already mentioned that during the scene as well and that is you know, Juzo definitely seems to be of a higher level than Seven, um, or perhaps it's just he has more experience, but Juzo definitely has better fighting prowess than Seven has, right? Um, I think that in terms of in-universe, Seven is more of a younger younger guy, maybe a kid or something, right? Um, and it definitely shows, right? Like, like come on. Seven was literally in combat mode, right? He's in combat mode, and we all know that gunslave units are used during actual wars. They're specifically designed to be war machines in combat mode. That he should be, you know, pretty much invincible uh, in regards to to most of the extended or even overextended near that area, right? And yet Juzo was able to still, um, at least at first, sort of deflect his blows and whatnot. And so I guess it just goes to show that how much of a fighting machine that Juzo actually is, right? Um, beyond that, not really much else to talk about during those scenes. Uh, this Pepper character is definitely interesting and uh, much more wacko than her sister ever was. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I like these interesting characters, right? Sassy. They got some sass in them. Um, it, she's a good antagonist, I'd say. 
Um, as for the rest, you know, like I said, we, we do get the flashback with Juzo, and, com you know, you add that with all the other stuff that was running through his head at that time, and also with Tetsuro, and so on and so forth, and the scene with Tetsuro, I do believe that Tetsuro is going to eventually end up being the controller for Juzo, right? I mean, it's already hinted at, he already, uh, fired off his gun once before, right? Um, and right now what he's lacking is power, he wants to use it for good, um, Juzo is really just, I think Juzo also wants to find a, a controller, a hands that share his same values and whatnot, and so it's pretty much going to be Tetsuro, we, I can, you know, we can pretty much say that already. Although when that's going to be official, don't really know, I feel like we have to at least fully learn of Juzo's backstory, like what actually happened between him uh, during the war, or between him and his former hands, and then... No, once we once we sort of have a resolution to that, then Tetsuro will come in and become uh, Juzo's new controller, right? Um, and as for what actually happened, it, they're pretty vague about it, but to, to the best that I can guess, it's probably that Juzo actually carried out some mission that was maybe on the more moralistically um, gray area in more one of the more moralistically gray areas or perhaps even completely immoral right um and so that's why his partner was saying that he shouldn't have treated him as a person and just as a tool instead right because if he was just a tool then it doesn't really matter tools are meant to be used it doesn't really matter what they're used for right but as a person uh that means they have a conscious right and you can't do and a person with a conscience shouldn't be doing bad stuff, right? That goes against their morals, et cetera, et cetera. So I, that's to the best of my, um, to the, to the best of my understanding, what that scene was actually portraying, and my best guess uh, going forward, right? So, anyways, for next episode, since I do know now that potentially there's going to be a second core and a continuation for this, I guess it doesn't matter as much that they are going to have to end the story at a good point in the next episode um, in regards to this new ghost extended or a thing on the jig, right? But I still do believe that it has some sort of relation with the main plot, otherwise they wouldn't, you know, put that here in such a awkward time, right? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. I got something caught in my throat. Anyways, uh, that's my review for No Guns Life episode 11. See you guys for the finale, at least for this season or this core, in the next episode. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.